Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. I've got a bit of a cold, so bear with me. My voice is, uh, uh, this may sound a little bit funny, but uh, I've got a great electrostatics problem for you today. We've got two styrofoam balls. Each of them has a mass of 10 grams, and they're suspended by a thread of 25 centimeters long. What we're gonna do is we're gonna charge both of those balls, and when we hang them like this, they're going to make an angle of 15 degrees with respect to that vertical. All right, I've got three questions associated with this problem here. Do the signs of the charges on these styrofoam balls, do they have to be the same or can they be, they be oppositely charged? Um, that's a conceptual question. Uh, question B says, do the magnitudes of the charges have to be the same for this situation to hold up? And in the third part, let's assume that the charges are the same. All right, what I want you to do now is do a little bit of work in order to find what is the charge on each of these balls. All right, like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to Physics Ninja. It's the best way to support what I do. All right, let's get started. All right, so my first problem says, are the signs of the charges the same or opposite? Well, let's consider this uh, ball here on the right-hand side. Let's label all the forces acting on this ball. First of all, you should have a weight acting down. You should have a tension along that string over here. And the next thing you have is if it's in this arrangement, you should have an electrostatic force, right? Uh, an interaction between both of these charged objects. So this is what my free body diagram looks like. Weight's acting down, tension is in green over here. And look at the way I have this force here, this electric force. It must be in this direction. Right, because we want both of these objects to repel each other. So how are these two objects going to repel each other? We can only have two cases, right? Consider the case where both of those charged styrofoam balls are positively charged. In that case, we know that those objects repel each other and that would produce this force here that is acting to the right, at least on the ball that's acting on the right. It would be in the opposite direction for this ball on the left-hand side. Um, what if they were both negatively charged? Again, in that case, that would also work, right? Because you would have a repulsive force between both of these charged objects. So are the signs of the charge the same or opposite? They must be the same in this case because if they are opposite, that's going to cr produce a force um, in which they are attracted to each other. And that's not what we want, right? If they're attracted to each other, there's no way that they are going to... Uh, produce this angle between them, right? So we cannot have them to be oppositely charged. All right, so that one's pretty straightforward, I think. All right, question B says, are the magnitudes of the charges necessarily the same? Well, let's go look at the free body diagram again. I drew the forces simply on the right-hand side, but let's imagine now we add the forces acting on uh, the left-hand ball over here. So what would we have? Well, we'd have a weight acting down and guess what? This weight would be the exact same as the other one because both of these have a mass of 10 grams. So that would be the same. Now the tension, again, the tension, both of these make an angle of 15 degrees with respect to that vertical. So the tension force, at least the magnitude of it, is going to be the same. Now the last one that we're going to add here on the left-hand ball is this repulsive force. The repulsive force on the left-hand one points in this direction and that is the electrostatic force. Now the magnitude of this force here, Fe, is written by Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law is written by K, constant value, Q1, imagine this one here has a charge Q1, this one here has a charge Q2, and divided by R squared. So R in this uh, diagram over here is the distance from center to center of both of those balls. That is the distance that you'd have to plug in here. So I would have to calculate that. But this force right here is the same magnitude acting on both of these charges. It's the value of this vector and it's the value of this vector. The only difference is the vectors are pointing in opposite directions, right? This one here is pointing to the left and this one here is pointing to the right. But you see that the charges can be anything, right? As long as they have the exact same sign, we could have different values. So are the magnitudes of the charges necessarily the same? The answer to this one is no. Even if they are different, you're still going to have the same magnitude of the force acting on each of these balls to be the same magnitude. Okay, so that's kind of an interesting problem. All right, part C says find the net charge on each ball 
assuming that the charges are equal. All right, so this is gonna be an important statement. So we're gonna write the charge here as simply being Q. And again, it could be positive or negative, that doesn't matter, right? We've talked about that before. So the first thing we're gonna do is, um, let's kind of work with these vectors over here. So I'm gonna just draw another vertical line here, and I wanna put this angle theta in this other part of the diagram here. Remember that the weight is simply equal to mg, and the mass was 10 grams. Uh, again, this angle theta, you should be able to convince yourself if these are two parallel vertical lines that I could also write that angle theta, which is equal to 15 degrees right in this area right here. All right, the next thing we want to do now is you want to break that tension down into X and Y components. So this is what the X component of the tension looks like. It's pointing in the left direction. And look at the vertical component of the tension is TY, and that is pointing straight up like this. So now I could break this tension down and write equations for Tx and Ty, now just using basic trigonometry. So this is what we have for Tx. Tx is the opposite, so the magnitude of Tx is T sine of theta, and the magnitude of Ty then is simply T cosine of theta. It's adjacent to that angle over here. Now, we have to see, well, these objects are not moving, which means they are in equilibrium. So that means we have to apply Newton's first law to this problem. And Newton's first law says, well, you have to add up all the forces acting on each individual object. In this case, it doesn't matter if we're only considering the right one. The left-hand side is very, very similar, although some of the forces may point in different directions. But that means we have to have the sum of the forces in the x direction sum to zero, and then we have to add up all the y components, and they must also equal to zero. All right, so let's first start with the x direction. Look what we have in the x direction. We have two forces here. We have this electrostatic force, Fe, and we also have a component of the tension here, which is also acting in the x direction. So this is how I would write it down. I would write x direction is equal to positive Fe because I'm just taking a coordinate system where everything pointing to the right is positive and everything pointing to the left is negative. Um, so then I have minus... Look at this second term here. This second term here is nothing more than this value of Tx right here, okay? All right, now let's think about the vertical direction. All right, in the vertical direction, what do we have? Well, we've got two components. The first one is the vertical component of Ty, which is T cosine of theta. And then I also have the weight of the object, which is acting down, so I place that as being a negative when I add up all the components. So what we're going to do now is simply label those forces, 1 and 2, and now we're left now with manipulating, doing a little bit of algebra in order to determine the unknowns. Now what we can do now is we can get rid of this electric force right here, and we get rid of the electric force by introducing Coulomb's Law. All right, and Coulomb's Law, you should remember, you can write it something like this. Now remember, we're going to simplify it because we're assuming that the charges are the same on each ball. So Coulomb's law then can simply be written as this expression right here. The magnitude of that force is equal to kq squared divided by r squared. Again, r is the distance from center to center. So we're going to come back to r in just a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is take equations 1 and 2 and simply substitute this electric force inside here. We're simply doing algebra at this point. And maybe I'll bring this T sine a theta on the other side. So this is what equation one looks like after I make that substitution. And let's do the same thing for equation two, maybe just bring the weight on the other side and have T cos theta by itself. So equation two now can be written as something like this. All right, now we have to start thinking about, we have two equations, let's think about what we know and what we don't know in this problem. My unknowns in this problem are the tension, Right? In the problem statement, I never told you what the tension force was. And the other unknown is the charge. And guess what? That is the actual question. I want to find Q. So in order to manipulate these, I want to get an expression for Q. And I don't want to have it in terms of the tension because I don't know the tension. Now, I could solve for the tension simply by looking at equation 2. Absolutely, you can do that. Uh, but what we're going to do now is simply eliminate these, uh, this variable from both of these equations. Now, we still need to find an expression for R, so I'm going to do that in a little bit, just using some uh, geometrical arguments. All right, uh, we do have an unknown here, which is the distance R. Now, in this figure, R, like I said before, is the distance from center to center. So this is how you would uh, write it on this figure. 
Now, if you can define r like that, it means that half this distance right here would simply be r divided by 2. Now, the reason I like to do this is because what we have here is we have a right angle triangle. And this string here has a length l, so you can go ahead and put that in the figure. That is 25 centimeters for this case. So you see if you use some trigonometry here using this right angle triangle right here, here's the 90 degrees, uh, what you can write is that sine of theta is equal to what? Well, it's the opposite, which is r over 2, divided by l. So at the end, what you can do is you can simply just bring the 2l on the other side, and you get that my value of r is simply going to be equal to 2l sine of this angle theta. So I'm going to use this in my equations to eliminate that variable r because, well, we know what the value of l is, and we know what the value of theta is. l was 25 centimeters, theta was 15 degrees. So we can calculate this right away. All right, so I start with my two equations over here. Uh, again, the goal was to eliminate the tension here. Uh, and one way you can do that is simply to eliminate tension. Uh, you can isolate or substitute, or we could divide equation 1 by equation 2. If I do that, you can see it on the right-hand side. I'm going to eliminate the tension. So if I do equation 1 divided by equation 2, this is what it looks like. So you're going to have kq squared divided by r squared, and you're also going to have the mg here from the second equation, which will appear in the denominator. Again, on the right-hand side, the tensions are going to cancel out, and you're going to be left simply with sine of theta divided by cosine of theta. So that's one easy way to eliminate tension. Now this you can simplify. Sine divided by cos is simply equals to tangent of theta. Well, look what we're trying to do now. We're simply trying to get what is this value of the charge. So what you have to do is simply do some algebra, bring everything here on the other side, and take the square root in order to evaluate what that charge Q is. So this is the last step here. Make sure you just follow, all right, do a little bit of algebra, take the square root, and this is what you're left with. It looks like a complicated expression, but it doesn't matter. We know all the terms here. And whether you substitute it in the numbers a little bit earlier in this problem or do it in the final step like I like to do, you're going to get to the same answer. Again, the value r, we evaluated that in the previous slide, and r was simply equals to 2l sine of theta. But don't forget, you have to square it if it appears over here in the numerator term. So let's go now and substitute in all our numbers and see what we get for that charge. All right, here in the red box over here, we have all the initial or all the values given in the problem. So the angle theta was 15 degrees. The mass was 10 grams. I'm going to convert that to kilograms. So 0 0.10 kilograms. My length 25 centimeters, 0.25 meters. And my constant K was 9 times 10 to the 9. Uh, the value of R, we had 2L sine of theta. I could substitute that into the expression up above and just make sure you square it. So you get a 4L squared sine squared theta. This is kind of a really complicated looking expression, right? But don't be, uh, uh, don't let that scare you. The only thing you do now is you substitute the numbers. So this is what it looks like. All right, I've got my L, 0.25, everything is here, and all you do is you take your time when you substitute these numbers in your calculator. I think I did this three times just to make sure I get the right answer. Uh, at the end, uh, when I did that, I got a charge equals to uh, 2.2 times 10 to the minus 7. Now, since we're working in SI units, that means that this charge over here, and if you worked out the units carefully, you would convince yourself that this charge is actually measured in coulombs. All right, so this is kind of a nice little problem on uh, equilibrium and how you can find the charges for uh, this configuration. All right, thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you next time.